Hey guys, it's another amazing day in the detail garage. Today in the shop, we've got this Harley Davidson. It's covered in scratch and swirls, which is something you really notice on things that are black or dark colors. So I'll be showing you just how to and the techniques and products you'll need to polish those and get rid of them for good. To start off, you want to wash off your vehicle just to get off that loose contaminant uh, or things that have landed on the paint. Then, in a case like this one where it's something that's been ridden, it's been outside, um, we want to clay bar the vehicle just to get off all the things that have embedded themselves in the paint. Then it'll be ready for the polish. So to get started, I'll be using a wash and wax. Uh, it was designed specific for motorcycles. All you do is you spray on, and then using a clean microfiber towel, I'll just wipe off in one direction, taking off any kind of light, dust, debris, uh, fingerprints, or anything else that's been uh, or anything else that's been sitting on the paint here. Uh, the next step is going to be the clay bar, which is taking off the uh, contaminants that found a way to embed themselves in the paint. Since this uh, bike is fairly well maintained, it doesn't feel like it needs a whole lot of clay barring, so it's just a, a light contamination. I'll use a light clay bar and then the uh, clay louver just to pull off anything that's found its way into the paint there. So to start off, I'm going to take a, a piece of the clay bar here. I'll knead this up into a little patty because you're only going to be using about two or three fingers um, when you're actually clay barring. And what this is, is it's just a, a very sticky substance and uh, as you run it across the paint, it'll pull things out of the uh, pores of the paint, kind of like when you do with your skin, it's exfoliating the paint. So before you put it on the paint, you actually want to lubricate it uh, using a clay luber. You can spray it directly onto the surface. I spray it on my hands because this is very sticky. Uh, you want to be pretty generous with it, so you'll spray it on the surface and then um, just go to clay barring. You just want to go back and forth in straight lines, no circles, giving it light pressure and then uh, as you start off, it'll kind of drag, but as you go over it and you add more lubrication, it's pulling off the contamination out of the paint and then it's going to start just gliding across. So now the surface is feeling really slick and smooth. I'm going to want to put my clay bar away. Uh, you want to put it back in its container or some kind of airtight seal, just so that it'll be ready for next time and it won't be all dried out and uh, it won't be any good anymore. So after you do that, you just want to wipe off the surface. This will take care of all the excess clay luber or any of that contamination you just pulled off. Just buff that out. So if this were my bike, I'd probably just take this fender off. It'd be a lot easier to clay it and make it a lot easier for me to polish it. But uh, the owner of this bike doesn't want us taking this bike apart. So we're just going to leave it on there and try our best to get as much of the you know, contamination off and we'll polish as best as we can. Uh, some of you guys at home are probably thinking the same thing. You know, you can take the fender off, put it on the bench, clay it, and then polish it, make it a lot easier on yourself. But uh, you're going to come across customers who don't want you taking their bike apart. So you just got to do what they're comfortable with. Um, and that's about it. So now that the surface has been prepped, uh, it's been washed, it's been clayed, it's time to move on to the polishing. I'll be using a dual action polisher. For those of you who are new to polishing or have never polished before, uh, there's two types of main polishers. There's a dual action like this here, and there's also a rotary. The big difference between the two is uh, a rotary, it just spins in a circle, kind of like a drill, which is really easy to burn paint if you haven't practiced. Uh, the dual action is a lot safer. It has safety features where, like, say you're putting too much pressure, it'll just vibrate instead of oscillating, which can burn the paint. Um, it's just a lot easier to use if you've never polished before. So I'll be using a small backing plate. This is key because I'm working on a motorcycle. Those of you who polished cars know that you, a bigger backing plate is kind of necessary, but since I'm only working on a little bit of surface area here, I'll be just using a small backing plate. Then I'll be using a green uh, final polishing pad. This is just because I've done a test spot on this bike with a white pad and it didn't give me quite the results that I was looking for. So I'm gonna step it up to uh, the green pad. That should do uh, just fine. So before you get started, you wanna center your pad on the backing plate. This way it spins nice and smooth, not kind of like a offset. So I'm just going to apply a few drops of the uh, scratch and swirl mover to the surface. This was specifically designed for bikes, so if you're wondering if it's safe to use on your bike, it is. So before we get started, I'll go ahead and prep the surface with a pad conditioner, just a few sprays on it. What this does is it's actually helping reduce friction uh, on your pad so that you're not putting a dry pad right on the surface. Now before I get started actually polishing it, I'm going to go ahead and put a tape line here just so you guys back home can see the difference between a polished side and then the non-polished side. You don't have to do this at home, but this is just so on camera you guys can see the difference between a polished side and a non-polished side. So next, get your polisher out, spread your uh, compound out over the area you'll be working on. And then to spread it out evenly, you want to put it on speed setting 1, turn it on and then just go back and forth over the surface you'll be working on, and then when you're actually going to start polishing, bump it up all the way to speed setting 6. So now that I've spread it out, I'm going to bump it up to speed setting 6. So 
So the proper technique for polishing is uh, you want to go up, down, side to side, and you want to overlap your last pass by at least 50%. And then keep that technique until your polish has completely gone clear. So you may have noticed as I was polishing, the uh, compound started to turn clear. That's kind of how it tells you that the compound's broken down and uh, that you've done enough uh, polishing. And obviously when you're done polishing, you want to buff off the excess compound. So I've just finished polishing this fender, or at least the area that I was talking about. I'm going to take the tape off just so you can see the difference. Uh, it looks pretty damn good, you know. This side has like less scratch and swirls, it's got a lot more gloss. This one's still got a little bit of scratches back there and the paint's kind of dead. So all that's left is do the rest of the bike, so I'll get started on that.